Welcome back. The second lecture that I delivered today was on emotional appraisals and attributions. And I have made videos on both of these concepts before. These were some earlier attempts at videos, therefore I don't think I articulated myself as well as I could now. And I'm planning on making videos that further fleshes out these concepts in the near future. But I did want to touch upon emotional appraisals, emotional reappraisals, and attributions really quick because it's almost as though in not teaching them regularly, I've forgotten just how cool the concepts are. And so I was delivering a lecture to these foreign exchange students about emotional appraisals and attributions. Now, attributions are the dispositions and the thoughts and ideas and ways of thinking that we assign to individuals who we don't even know. Now, we assign attributions based on prior experiences with that individual or body language of that individual. Perhaps that individual is giving off some nonverbal communication cues that we don't really like. Perhaps they look intimidating. Perhaps they're wearing clothing that we've assigned as intimidating, that we have perceived as intimidating. Therefore, we're assigning that characteristic to them when realistically, they might not be intimidating at all. They might be the nicest, most welcoming person in the group. So that's attribution. And I broke down what attribution was more thoroughly. And then I had these students tell me about a time where they might have assigned attributions to someone whom did, they didn't deserve those specific attributions. Uh, and this seemed to be a very fruitful discussion. All, every student in the classroom had some example of a time where they falsely um, assigned somebody the incorrect attributions. And so this was a good discussion. Then we moved on to appraisals. And appraisals are the emotions that we have tied to certain events. And appraisals are neat because they're used a lot in therapy and they're used a lot in psychology to reframe events so that we derive power and pleasure or happiness from them instead of seeing them as a negative, just nothing beneficial comes from it event. So appraisals have to do with events and things that have happened in our life and how we react to those events because of the emotions that we assign to those events. So the example that I use is the example of the office space. So say my boss calls me into the office and says, Liam, you're fired. Well, typically the Liam that I am now, I've been conditioned to see being fired as a net negative thing. Nothing good can come of being fired. You're losing a job, you're losing employment, you're no longer going to have income coming in. So that I react negatively towards. Whereas my boss calls me in and says, I'm going to give you a promotion, I'm going to react positively towards that because I've been conditioned to see that as a positive event. However, let's change the frame a little bit. Say I'm working at an office where I don't like the staff, I find them really annoying, I think they're constantly undermining me, I don't feel appreciated, and I think my boss is corrupt. Well then he calls me into his office and he says, Liam, you're fired. And all of a sudden, the emotions that I assign to the term that is typically seen as a net negative thing are positive because I have convinced myself that this is good. I have seen the good in being fired. And so I am reappraising the situation to then give me some sort of positive emotion and not negative emotion. And this led to a wild discussion about religion and politics and family and friendship and how a bad event doesn't always have to be a bad event. And yes, we acknowledged that there are inherently bad things that happen. And it's really tough to see the good in horrendous things that occur sometimes. But on the whole, most of the situations that were brought up, we could appraise them as, okay, well, this happened. We don't really like that. But then let's reframe it and reappraise it and then re-examine the emotions that we're deriving from that. And it was really cool getting to see them kind of entangle themselves with, uh, with their emotions or grapple with their emotions and see what they're capable of when it comes to changing their emotional state. It's a really powerful thing when you think about it. So I thoroughly enjoyed that and I feel as though I redeemed myself from my last lecture due to that. Okay, well, that is that. Till next time.